Welcome friends to my channel. Today we're going to be talking about a topic um, that's fairly new to me but um, I've always kind of enjoyed jewelry making and that is today we are going to be uh, understanding a little bit more about how to make rings for ring jewelry such as chain mail, bezantine chain, uh, they can be used for necklaces, charms, bracelets, key rings, uh, you name it. Um, so these are just a few of the examples of things that I have made. Uh, this copper necklace, or this copper uh, bracelet, uh, this gold plated and silver plated uh, necklace uh, made out of rings, and this large um, I'm not sure what weave it is called, but it is a large uh, chain, copper chain mail bracelet. Um, it's fun with all the different patterns. Um, and, you know, when you're sitting around doing nothing and bored out of your mind, it gives you something to do. Um, but as of right now, the only thing I have available on my Etsy store is this cross and chain. But soon the bracelet and custom ordered uh, chainmail bracelets and necklaces will be available as well as other jewelry. Um, but I just started my Etsy store. I'm not real rushed to get it up and going. I just wanted to get the base set. So when we talk about making rings for chainmail, um, basically there's only really one good way to do that. And that is... To use a mandrel and what I've used in the past for mandrels is just a piece of uh, welding rod like this just welding steel not welding rod just steel that you pick up at your local ace or um, tractor supply other big box stores the blue and the orange one things like that um, and I'm not sponsored by any of these stores that I mentioned today um, but then you just wrap your wire around that well, there is a company, put that back, their name is Pepe Tools, and they make a kit that looks something similar to this. Um, it includes mandrels of all different sizes, a cutter uh, attachment that attaches to your regular 303, I believe it is. Um, Fordham uh, handle Com comes with a hand crank drill to put your mandrels in to uh, wind uh, your rings um, and then a little holder this back here get it out. this right here which allows you to put your rings in and it holds them while you cut them. Um, this isn't a Pepe's Tools because you would first off have Pepe Tools right here. I'm not sure if Pepe Tools uses a plywood blank. They may. There's no problem with it. I would just think they would use something nicer like a, a molded plastic holder. Um, so you get these rings, this, this, and this aluminum housing with a mandrel for a saw blade. Now, this is about half the cost um, of a Pepe Tools. Is it made as nice? I am going to say no, it's not. Uh, the drill crank is pretty wobbly. You know, even if screwed down tight. I don't know how Pepe Tools is. Pepe Tools could be the same way. I'm not saying that Pepe's is better than this one. Um, but, with my experience, Chinese copies usually aren't all that great. Um, the aluminum housing, I mean, you really can't screw it up. But they did. Um, this line right here is where you're supposed to line your blade up with. And if you see the separation here in my blade mandrel with where the line is, 
That is because the distance between here and here, that's not the center. So now I probably should have read Pepe's instructions before doing it, but I lined it up like I thought that was supposed to be for, which it is. And as you can see, where I have actually cut, uh, you can see it here, there we go. You can see where I had cut into the actual piece. And just to show you here, um, if you can see that, it's supposed to line up but it doesn't and if you flip it the other way come on go on there there we go as you can see it's not in the middle on that side either so you're supposed to place this on with the blade in that hole then start it up and then cutting I didn't I started it up and then tried plunging it uh, down there and that's why it cut let me adjust this up here a little bit for you guys so you guys can get a better view. Apologize about the view here. There we go. So, um, that was the first issue with it. Not, not that that, you know, if I would have paid attention, I probably would have noticed that. The second was is you've got to cut the rings and here it is two styles the smaller one is this uh, elements wire 20 gauge um, antique copper color uh, from beadsmith I got this at one of the craft stores uh, Hobby Lobby the larger roll is actually cut out of this if you guys might recognize that is electrical wire and so this is 12 2 and so this is 12 gauge wire in here to give me bigger links um, so this is the saw blade that came with it and it doesn't cut worth anything so I thought I would order a, another blade from Amazon so I ordered Amazon's cheap saw blade and this is what I get um, notice how much thicker it is let me get my calipers here and of course I'm gonna go ahead and pause you guys real quick I'll be right back I'm gonna go get them all right I'm back if I would have just opened my eyes I would have seen them so we will zero this out and put it on millimeters so the blade that came with it is let's see that 0.74 millimeters now the one I bought from Amazon is 0 0.82 0 0.81 millimeters and so that one was worse that's more for cutting metal even though it said or cutting wood even though it said it was can cut metal too so I went ahead spent the extra bucks on the Pepe tools saw blade unfortunately I broke two already because they are very delicate as you can see you can hardly see the thing because it is 0.18 millimeters thick and what that does is it gives you a really nice thin kerf so when you close the rings they hold their circle shape whereas if you were to use this one here that came with the kit uh, because you're taking off almost 50 almost a half a millimeter you're of course not going to get a very good clean uh, circle now that jewelry that I showed you, it was all cut with this kit. The, the circles come out fine. Um, they start off with a two millimeter. Let's see how accurate that is. So, two, four, seven. 
and we're zero. So it's two and a half, three, uh, it's close to three. Let's go up here. So there's four, four and a half, there's five. And I believe from five or four and a half on up, they are marked. I don't know if you can see that right there. Let's see where it's marked. It says five. And uh, it's pretty close to five. I'm okay with that. Um, I like them to be a little undersized because when you open them up, you know, take the tension off, they kind of stretch out. And it go, this kit goes all the way up to a 12, which is almost a uh, full half inch. And it is in between 11, eh, it's, it's jumping up there to 12. Um, so, you know, it's pretty accurate. Um, and, and they, they do a good job. Um, when they get to four and a half on up, they start putting a little hot side hole in them to hold your wire. Uh, or you can just, uh, bring the chuck cap here. You just slide them in between the two chuck pieces and they kind of hold themselves in place. Um, you can use a drill. I use my, uh, Hitachi cordless drill with this. Um, on slow speed, you got to make sure it goes slow because if it will outrun you and then it'll, uh, as you're spinning it to hold tension, it does back it up. Let me go ahead and, uh, spool some wire up real quick. I got this, uh, pretty light blue. Now this is aluminum wire. You can use aluminum wire, copper, um... They, they, they don't like you cutting like stainless steel stuff like that and we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna make six yeah we're gonna make six so as you can see the wire goes right inside there to hold it while you spin it and let me open her up Trade this stuff around here. Put that in there. And then I like just to give it a little bend. And then as you spin it, you want to hold it over so it's tied up against the uh, previous and provide some tension down on the wire so that it spins it nice and tight push it over um, I do find it easier to do this on my drill um, but this works as well um, it helps when I put it in, a, in the vise and lock it down keeps it from moving around like it is but we will call her good right there snip it off um, you gotta snip, the bad thing is, is you gotta snip this little piece off here as well. And then it slides right off. So you do lose a small bit of your wire. But, and then as you cut it with the blade, um, you, you lube it up with this cut lube. You order Pepe's tool. Pepe's comes with his own brand, but if this is the same stuff. It's just a, a wax lubricant. You coat it. You take it over here. And I'll open this up for you so you can see inside. As you can see, I've been using it. It's all dirty. But here's a spacer at the bottom. I'm not sure what that material is. It's just a softer. It's almost like a... feels almost like those rubbery magnets that you get for your fridge. Oops. Then you take your part and you put it in here like this. Make sure that the part that you applied your wax lubricant to, you hold her down, you snug that side up, and you just snug it up. You don't put
put too much tension on it. Um, it's better if these are level. And then as you insert your cutter, you turn. Your, I have a foot pedal for my uh, Fordham, which is actually a Dremel, but it's a setup for Fordham tools. And then as you turn on, you run it, and you come through here like this. Um, it cuts nice little rings out for you. Let me see if I have some. Here's some rings right here. So here is a good one right here. So you notice that the slit is very narrow where some of these others like that one is wider um, I believe that one was cut with the one that came with it um, if you also get too quick and try to rush it it will crush your rings make them oblong mark them up real bad and will break the blades. The blades are very fragile. Um, like I said, this is my third one. Um, I wish they weren't 20 bucks a piece. Um, this is an inch and a half. They come in an inch and a quarter. I'm probably going to order an inch and a quarter next because I think this copy is of their older, older variant, which is only an inch and a quarter and not an inch and a half cut. So that is a copy of a Pepe Tools cutter, ring cutter, or ring maker. Um, for a hundred bucks, the quality is not there. Um, if I had to do this again, it's only another hundred dollars. You get a much better product. Um, I would imagine you wouldn't have the lathe marks that you see here on the end of this um, piece here. It'd probably be a plastic cutter um, uh, and all of that so in hindsight I wish I wouldn't have bought it um, but it does allow me uh, to do what I want to do um, gives me a mandrel set um, opposed to me having to stick with round stock that I buy from the hardware store although there's nothing wrong with that either um, but this gives me several sizes to choose from the handy little cutter which I would say probably half the time especially on these big rings like this I still use a saw on these um, just cuz I, I you get a better cut with a with a saw than you do with this um, and these are bigger pieces and pe people are going to see them and so I like to make sure that they butt up, they butt up nice. Um, this does a good job of that. I'm not, I'm not saying Pepe's tool design isn't bad and this Chinese copy does allow you to get good cuts out of it with the right saw blade. Uh, I just like using the handsaw and these larger pieces. Um, these are great. Uh, and, and a lot of the reason being is as you're cutting the small stuff, they stay standing up when you cut through these and there's less pressure on one one will fall over and then can hang up on the blade and that's why I get a lot of breaks is when cutting stuff like that if anybody's got a tip on how I can do that without preventing those from falling over and giving me poor cuts uh, please leave me a message below I would really like to not break as many blades um, if you've got any questions about the product Basically, what I see out of it is I don't use this. I use this, this, and this out of it. So, looking back, I could have got a better usable hand crank for an additional $100 and it had a really nice set. Um, I'm not going to, if I wanted to turn around and sell these, I'm not going to be able to get what I would get if they were out of a Pepe Tools kit. Um, but anyways I would just thought I would show you this um, definitely please 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 don't buy the Chinese knockoff um, Pepe tools kit is definitely worth the extra coin um, 
and next year when I'm ready to start buying more tools as I get more involved um, in jewelry making I need to buy a roller mill first so if anybody knows where I can get a nice one of those fairly inexpensive please leave a comment below um, I need a roller mill so I gotta save up money on that because they're they're not cheap um, I want to be able to start making my own wire so I can make instead of steel plated or well, silver plated metal wire I can get actual silver wire or silver plate um, alloy and make my own 925 uh, sterling and roll my own wire and pull my own wire and all of that good stuff so in the long run because I bought this is my third one I have paid the full amount of what I would have paid for if I would have just went through Pepe Tools. Um, Randy May over at GMAO uh, on YouTube, he also has one of these and he did a great uh, tutorial on how to use one. I uh, recommend you go over and check out his channel. Um, got any questions, please uh, comment down below. Uh, be sure to like, subscribe. We've got more knife making, more blacksmithing, uh, jewelry making coming up, more casting and resins and urethanes, um, and more uh, more charity stuff for the uh, Castleman's Disease Collaborative Network coming up as well. So please like, subscribe, ring that bell. If you really do want to help me make more videos possible and help me earn money to um, buy new tools to bring productions to you um, with better better equipment better contact head on over to my patreon website uh, and sign up for my patreon although I'm not here to make money uh, I'm doing this for fun um, if uh, you can please share this video as well if you know anybody that's thinking about buying one of these Chinese knockoff kits uh, one of these days I will learn not to buy the Chinese knockoff. Well, thank you for watching, and we will catch you next time. Goodbye.